Are you ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. Roundtable family. Hi, everybody. Thanks for listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network or watching us on Broadway World or over on YouTube. You want to talk about social media sensation? Man, I wish I had our next guest follows, likes, comments, and streams. Oh, I would be so happy. A star, a baby, and a star, and going to the UK and doing music and, and writing music. I can't write anything, only my grocery list. Man, I wish I had it together at 17. We're going to find out the whole scoop. Kirstie Long is here with music out. Listen, the music is like pop, rock, bop, mainstream, on the radio, top 40, and theater, and everything that I wish I could be. And I'm just rambling on and on because I'm just obsessed and I haven't even brought the guests out yet. Good night. That's the whole show. Kirstie, welcome to the show. Hi. You're like a social media superstar. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. Is it scary? Was it? All right. Let's start from the okay. beginning. When did you want to write music? When I was nine. I so long, was so, so long bored. Ago. So long ago. <laughs> when I was nine, I got bored. I went outside. It was like raining. I was with my cats. And I thought I was like a really cool, moody nine-year-old just sitting out with my like pad and pencil. And I wrote this song and I brought it to my dad when he got home from work. I was like waiting in the garage as he like pulled in. He was like, what is this kid doing? <laughs> and I was like, I wrote a song. And he was like, oh, and uh, have you ever heard of ther therapy? Because we're going to put you in that too. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you, where do you grow up? You're in the United States. Yeah. So I grew up in Jersey, but currently I live in Utah. Well, I lived in Jersey. I grew up there for 40 years of my growing up. Okay. And then I just moved to Michigan. So now we're out here in the middle of America. Where in New Jersey were you from? So like Clinton, Annandale area. Okay. So you're like a little west and I grew up in Fort Lee, right by the George Washington Bridge. Yeah. Okay. So crazy Jersey knows crazy Jersey. I love a Jersey. I love it. So you will go home. You, your dad goes in the garage. You write a song. But there's a big journey from writing a song to millions of streams to music being put out. So how did that happen where it was like, I'm ready to put this out to the world? A lot of connections, actually. Like the music industry is very like, oh, I know a person who knows a person who knows a dude that could get you a deal and have your music on the radio. So I was discovered by a local like vocal teacher, Dean Kalen, and he knew people who knew people who knew people and it i feel like the people that i've met is what kind of like boosted me through my music career but yeah was it scary were you scared to share the music were you are you scared to go on stage and sing like what what what's it like my first time ever performing i was like nine years old and i cried and i bawled and i was so scared and I got on stage and I had my little, like, my little sheet music. And I just stared, like, trembling at the sheet music the whole time. But it gets a lot easier. And it's such a fun experience being on stage and performing and sharing your music that after a while, the, like, ah, oh, this is terrifying is outweighed by the, like, this is so much fun. Before we talk about Little Piece of You, your music in and of itself, like um, Sad Song and, and things like that that people can listen to, do you get inspiration from everything? Is it like friendships, family, uh, watching a TV show, a movie? Do you write words down? Like what part of the songwriting do you do? Literally, like all of it, all of what you just said. Like I'll write songs on like books I've read. If I'm like, oh, this relationship is super toxic. I'll go and write a song about it. Even though it's about <laughs> everyone's like, what relationship were you in? And I was like, me, no. Katniss, some really hard ones. <laughs> oh, I get it. That's a good inspiration. You know, mocking, uh, um, Yes, the Hunger Games yes. is perfect, perfect inspiration. Um, perfect. perfect. So when you put music out, like I have music out, not as many people listen to it as yours, but people, some people do somewhere. Some old lady is listening to it. No, and lovely people. When you put music out, was it scary the first day people hear it? Like not your parents, not the people that work for you or you work for them to put like the world now listens to your music. Yeah, I think it's more like, I'm more of in shock of the fact that that could even like 
is even a possibility. But I hope that I'm less scared about it and more I hope that it like impacts people. I'm like, please just enjoy it. Have fun. Like, I hope it makes your day better or helps you through something that you're going through. So, yeah. I, you have performed at the Bitter End and the Apollo and the Stone Pony, which is, I mean, Jersey, being Jersey people we are is about as iconic as it possibly gets. Oh, yeah what what is a show like with like what is your show like a lot of fun hopefully i would i would assume um i i like to lean more into the like 80s rock side so i add a lot of like heavy guitar and like fun stuff like that but i feel like for me personally it's an experience it's like a good fun experience way that i like let out my emotions and what i'm feeling and i hope that it's the same for the audience too well, we could follow you on Instagram. You have a lot of followers that, and we always can use more and we want people to discover your music and what you're doing. Like yes, a please. prodigy people. And so you put, you write the music too. Yeah. <laughs> but you say it so casually, like, duh, of course I write the music. <laughs> but how did you learn the instruments? Like what do you credit as inspiring you to write music? So a little bit of my dad, my dad plays, he taught himself how to play the guitar when he was really little. And so he would write like his little email songs when he was a teenager. I, and then eventually he, he's a sports guy. So we, so we went to college for sports and all this stuff. And then I showed up and I was like, I want to sing. And my dad was like, I think I have a guitar somewhere. And he kind of totally like taught me, and he like would show me his old songs that he wrote. So I think I, I credit it a lot to my dad actually. But also my family is really big on music. Like when I was young, I was like raised on like Led Zeppelin and Heart and all of these like older songs. So whenever someone's like, oh, what's this? What's the song you remember from your childhood? I'm like, yeah, Stairway to Heaven. And they're like, what? <laughs> that's, but that's what's so good. I, I read on your website and through your bio press release and everything that Stevie Nicks was your first concert. And yeah. I mean, she puts on one heck of a show. Nobody's got a voice like her voice is gorgeous. It's, it's I was by far the youngest person there. Everyone was like, <laughs> I'm like belting out the songs, like screaming them. And they're all like, what? So the rumor on the street is, personally, everybody, 50 videos with a million plus views. Um, I, I, you know, IDC asked me if I care, which was written with, you know, Hot Shell Ray, lead singer. Uh, if it's Burn It Down with over a million streams, like your music is gets out there. What can we do now that we've met you, now that we want to support you? Like what as fans can we do to get this music to continue to go? Enjoy it. If like, if you, if you like it, put it on a playlist. If like, play it in the morning, have it as your alarm. Just if, as long as you enjoy it and you like the music, just, just enjoy it. That's all I want. Do you, were you doing all of this and going to school? Yeah. I actually graduated early from high school. So I should be a senior in high school, but I graduated early. Wow. Okay. I'm amazed. I'm fascinated. I need to meet your parents and give them a high five. As a teacher in real life who teaches middle school, I need to know the secret. What did they do to make this? Because this is what we should all, where are my students like this? They're not there. <laughs> so, so when you, so the rumor is before, and we're going to talk about a little piece of you in a minute. Is there an album on the way? Like you don't have a full length album out yet. No, I don't. But there is for sure going to be an EP released and it's called Emotions. And every song, sad song was the like little tease of that. Every song is going to be a different emotion, but not in the way that you think. Like if you listen to sad song, it's not a sad song. Okay. It's kind of like a cheeky play on the term sad song. So you'll get that with like half happy and a bunch of other songs that are based on emotions, but okay. have a, you have a fun little play to them. So it's like a song cycle of like different songs feel a different way and have it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. I'm in. Sign me up. Where do I pre-order my copy? What do I have to do? So <laughs> you no. uh, have written for other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, I reposted Vanessa Williams' song. I was excited to see Vanessa. We've had Vanessa Williams on the red carpet. We've chatted with Vanessa Williams. She's so beautiful and gorgeous. Her voice is stunning. How does Vanessa Williams say, 
I want to sing the dance song about the legs and the dancing. And where did you get, the, did, did she come to you? Did her people come to you first? Did you write the song? Like, how does it work? So I knew a person, I was like working with a guy who was good friends with Vanessa and she was trying to start her new album. And he kind of like showed her, I think it was like, I don't care. I think he showed her, I don't care. And was like, yeah, this is a girl I'm working with. And she was like, I want that kid to write me a song. And I was like, yes, please. Okay. Yeah. So I had a zoom call with her, which by the way is so intimidating when it's like, oh yeah, just hop on the zoom call with me. And it's like freaking Vanessa Williams. And you're just like, I love you. But I had a zoom call with her and she just told me all of like what she was, what she wanted, what she was expecting from the song, like what kind of a vibe she wanted, what kind of tempo. She just kind of like ran me through everything that she was feeling. And as she was like talking, she mentioned, I don't remember who, but she mentioned an older actor that she had seen on the red carpet. And she made a comment about how like, she may be old, she may not be in her prime, but her legs are there. And we were like, that's yeah we're, yeah so we wrote the song based on that comment that she made about how like you could be as old your voice could be as gone as you want but your legs are always going to be there and so we wrote legs based off of that and i was in the studio when she recorded it with her like halo angels like the sun was like shining on her she's in, she's insane she's incredible <laughs> Legs Keep Dancing is the single. So if you haven't heard it, it was it got a lot of play and press from People Magazine to all sorts of pickups because she was back after years of not recording original music. And not only was it is it on her, but it's like the single. Like it is the single. It's not just. It's, it's insane. It's mind blowing because it wasn't supposed to be. It wasn't the single at all. She had another song that was going to be her single. And she and this was just going to be one of the other ones. But she liked it so much that she made it like, I can't, I can't even like. What is the goal? Like for you, are you aspiring to be like another artist? Are you just aspiring to sell records? Are you aspiring to, you know, go on your own uh, Eras tour? Like what is the goal? The goal is to, is to touch as many people as I can. Not, not like I want to impact as many people as, as I need. And then when I feel like I've, hit that quota, then I've hit that quota, but I feel like someone out there needs my music and I'm going to keep sharing it until they find it. Okay. And when you're, when you sell out MetLife Stadium and have a hundred thousand people there, I'm going to remember this moment. And I just want to high five. Like I, I just want to high five. Okay. Backstage passes. Uh, that's what I, stage. <laughs> I'm in, let's go. So I'm, I'm in, I'm ready. Um, man, I'm so obsessed. Do you have a team of, your parents must be very proud of you. I, I'm sure they are very protective of you and I hope I'm involved and, and making sure you're okay. How do they let you, controversial question, how do they let you be who you are and build your team and also be parents who want to keep their baby safe? How do they, is it hard? I don't, they seem, I've got really good parents. Like I love, like, I don't understand people who are like, oh, I, my mom did. I'm like, why are you complaining about your mom? Your mom is like, <laughs> I love my mom. I could never complain about my mom. Same with my dad. Like people are like, oh, my dad did. And I'm like, my dad wrote a song with me the other day. Like, I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> but I feel like they do a really good job. They're very adamant on like, is, are you sure this is what you want to do? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, perfect. Let's go. Let's go. Let's roll with it. But every once in a while they're checking. They're like, you sure, you're sure this is still like, this is what you want to do. You're not getting like forced by it. Like there's like nothing else that this is just what you want to do with life. I'm like, yeah. And so they're very good. They're very good parents. I think they do a very good job of everything. Do you, have you experienced hard parts of the business? Like, are there disappointments? Are there people who have not been nice? And how do you handle that? Like for the people out here who thinks it's easy and fun, what's it like when there's hard days? I mean, everybody's got their hard days. Everybody got their, their day at work that you're like, that sucked. And I'm going to go home and eat all of my ice cream. Most like, days. Most <laughs> <laughs> there there are a lot of hard days but it's not it doesn't compare at all to the positive side of the industry like yeah maybe I had a creepo in an interview and it was weird and or maybe there was one day where someone yelled at me and whatnot but it's never as negative as the like I got to share all of my feelings through the song and I got to impact other people and like it's it doesn't compare at all to the positive 
you know why I'm obsessed? I'm obsessed with this idea because I was going to music school and at 17, 18 years old, I quit and became a teacher. I was going to Juilliard at Lincoln Center and I was still classically. Hey, man, that's insane. Sorry, but I had a bad, no, please. I had a bad audition for Rent on Broadway. And I said, I don't have the courage to do this. I'm never going to make it. And I didn't sing for 16 years. And when I hear people like you who have this fearless attitude where you're like, I have something to share and I'm going to share it. And if people like it, that's great. And if people don't, that's great. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because somebody needs it. It inspires me because I wish I had that courage to be your age. So I hope you just fly. Like, don't just go. Just go. Thank you so much. It, it really moves me. And I always think like, what could have, should have, would have, but it worked out good for me. And I know it's going to work out amazing for you. Just keep going because you have something so special to share with the world. Thank you. Speaking of sharing with the world, you're now we 15 minutes in, but I had to get through all that because <laughs> the world, I was fascinated. So you have little piece of you and you're doing two, you've been with the show for a minute, little piece of you. Uh, an atypical musical. So you're not just writing, you're, you're a musical theater baby too. So tell us, what is this? So a little piece of you is my little, my little project child. It's all of the songs that my label, that I, my, well, I brought my music to a bunch of people and I was like, okay, hey, which ones are we going to release? And they said, oh, these ones. And then they had like 15 or 16 that they were like, they're good. They're great. They're just not like pop mainstream. And so that's all of the songs that they were like, yeah, we're not going to release them. And there, I we made a musical out of them. And it's it kind of happened like on its own. We were just kind of like, oh, that's so disappointing. And we brought it to like a couple of theater friends of ours. And we're like, here's all the music that we have that we can't do anything with. And they were like, oh, this is a really cool concept album. We were like, concept album? <laughs> this, isn't a call. this is just like a bunch of different songs from a bunch of different parts of our lives. And they were like, no, it's a story. Like, like, look, here's the story. And we were like, okay, sure, why not? Let's run with it. So we brought it to Melissa Leilani Larson, who's our playwright, who's insane. She's never written a musical before because she does plays. She did the adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. He, she turned that into a play. Like, she is insane, but she's never, ever done a musical. And we were like, that's cool. Write a play. And then we'll add the, we'll, we'll like, add a play that follows the same story as the music and it'll, and it'll fit together. And she was like, okay, sure. And we did. And it's insane. And it's, it gives the vibe of like a rock concert, but also like a play at the same time. So that was kind of the concept that we started with. We were like, it's a rock concert and a play. Now that it's like con gone to London and more like it had grown a little bit throughout the years, it's now more of a musical, which is why it's an atypical musical. So it's less of like, here's a play, here's a rock concert. It kind of mushed them both together. But it's so cool. It's so neat. I'm so excited. And you you don't play you. You play a character named Sydney. Yeah. And you have a cast of people. It's not just you in the show. And you're telling, it's not your story either. No. What, are you excited? It's coming this month, everybody. If you're in the UK and you want to get tickets, you have to go to lwtheaters.co.uk. The links there will be below us if you're listening to us on the podcast network. And you can find the links also on, on, on your social media as well. Yeah. You're two nights. And what is it like to play a character and do a musical as opposed to a concert where you get to be you and sing your songs? So it's really similar, mostly because the character that I play is a rock star. So I can take a lot of like what I know from being an artist and being on stage and I can kind of add it to the character. So it's, I don't feel like it would be as hard if it was like, and now you're playing Juliet. <laughs> like, it's not like such a drastic change because my character, Sydney, is like the Taylor Swift of that like universe. So it's, I've got a lot of like, a lot of like information as to how I can go about doing that. But yes. yeah. So th this is th this is happening. So everybody needs to if you're or if you're not uh, there and you just are up want to be up and up and up of all the things to come because the, your producers your producers and the whole team of people that are around this are like top notch people. Everybody. Oh yeah. So this is not some you know garage uh, production out in the UK. So if you want to stay up to date, you got to look for it. And and I'm sure there's going to be a life of this musical as it continues <laughs> as it continues and all of that. Your one of the songs from the musical, by the yeah. way, um, "Burn It Down." It has nearly over a hundred thousand views, so people have already found the song. Yeah, 
it's a cool thing because it's like you're a pop rock artist, but you're like crossed over to the musical theater fandom and they're savagely fans. Like they oh, love yeah. So what was it like when your family saw this for the first time and the people in your life? They, they it felt, it like matched the, the vibe, I guess, of like me. They loved it. All of my family, all my friends, they were like, this is incredible. This is insane. You need to go take this to, to Broadway and wherever else it takes us. But like, it's big. It's gotten like, we've got Dujana Gift, Misha Paris, like people that like I met the other day and was like, I do not deserve to be in the same room as you. Like you are insane. So it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great production. And I, I feel like just come and see it. Just come and come and check it out. Check it out and then be ready for it to be somewhere. Like I'm ready for your long run, like your big, big production. And I know it's coming. I feel it in my bones. Thank Do you, you feel the pressure? Like when you have this going on, you know, it, a couple of years ago, you signed, you know, you signed a distribution deal with Warner Brothers, which is nothing to sneeze at. That's like a big fancy company. You know, you, you have, you know, writing music for big fancy people. Does the pressure get to you? How do you stay 17 and enjoy your life and not work all the time? I have some very honest siblings. That's how I do it. <laughs> yeah. I have I have siblings that every time I practice, they're like, Kirstie, shut up. We don't, you're okay, good. We get it. You're a singer. Calm down. <laughs> they're kind of what keep me grounded. They're very, like, they love me and they love my work. But like, they're, they're, they're my siblings. So they're very like, <clears throat> about everything that I do. So it's that they're kind of what keep me a teenager. They'll be like, stop rehearsing. Let's go play Mario Kart. Like, what are you doing? So them, I've got a lot of good friends that that realize what I'm doing and what I'm and are there to support me, but are also there to kind of like pull me out of it and take me and go watch a movie or whatever it is that a normal teenager does. <laughs> Yes, I love all of that. I, that's the best answer ever. And your siblings, no matter how much success you have, they're always going to look at you like, ugh, because yeah. my that's what siblings do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep you grounded. But I want to now clear up this rumor, everybody. I want to admit that in my head, Boys in Jersey, a song that that was written by you, I have now taken credit that I'm I'm going to say it was written about me. That's what I'm going to start telling people. The boys in Jersey. <laughs> I'm a boy in Jersey, so I would like to be considered one of the boys in the song. Boys in Jersey? I'm just taking that. I, okay. I, I mean, you don't have to confirm it. I'm just going to tell people. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That was that's good <laughs> enough. That's good enough. Jersey runs deep, everybody. Oh, Even yeah. if you're not there, Jersey runs deep. Um, so I'm excited for you. Are you? When do you go to the UK? I leave this Monday. Oh my goodness! So you're ready. I'm ready. I'm prepared. Do you have to memorize your line? Do you well, you wrote the music, so do you know it all? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I've been training for the last couple of months, but I don't have very many lines. I have like two or three because my whole my character's whole job is to be like the soundtrack to the play that's going on. So I'm I have it easy. Um I don't even understand how Dujana and Misha can and everybody in this production can do it because they have to memorize all of their lines and then also help and also do music. And so I'm just there to support them. Well, do you play on stage or you just sing? Um, a little bit both, but okay. I guess you have to you have to come and see. All right, we have to come and see. You better you better get those tickets, everybody, before everyone's talking about it. LWtheaters.co.uk, and then we're gonna follow you on social media so that we can see it. Listen, you can go right now. You can you can search her name. You can go to YouTube. You can go to Spotify or Apple or or Amazon or wherever title wherever you listen to music and listen to music not only from the show but all of the music that's been released so far and be up with it because it's the next thing everybody i'm telling you <laughs> i'm so excited to have me met you i'm excited to watch you skyrocket we'll be following and supporting so, nice. so much love thank you break all those legs have a blast out there thank you so much this is such a fun interview appreciate you that you are a star i'm ready let's thank go you.